please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Well, back home on the Lal Street, the bears maintained the momentum as markets fell for the third straight day on Wednesday. The Nifty ended almost half a percent lower, though rebounded sharply from that 11,200 mark. The Sensex managed to hold on to that 37,100 mark, ending with cuts of around 160 points. But it was the broader markets that really underperformed, with the banking index shedding more than half a percent. And the mid-cap index ended almost a percent in the red. But that was about Wednesday. Reema joins us to tell us how does the trade picture look for today. Well, Reema, we have seen deep cashes for the Nifty and the Sensex, 2.5% lower for the week. But for today, at least, it looks like the start will be on the front foot. Yes, Anisha, good morning. It looks like there could be a bit of a short covering bounce in store for us. The SGX Nifty is higher in trade. The last time I checked, it was up close to about 0.4%. For all the reasons that you attributed to one, that we've seen a sharp correction in the market in the last few days. Um, so the Sensex is down close to about 1,000 points in the last three trading sessions. And today we've woken up to fairly upbeat global queues. So the Dow has hit a fresh record level for the first time since January as trade concerns ease and the economic data is quite strong. So the Jobless claims have fallen to the lowest level in 49 years. Uh, for the week ended 15th of September, the jobless claims have stood at 201,000, lower than expectations of 210,000. Not just that, uh, the other macro factors that you know the Indian equity markets track very closely, uh, the dollar index too has eased to a level below 94, and Brent crude prices continue to hover around that 78 and a half, $79 per barrel mark. So there is no deterioration. In fact, the dollar index from Wednesday's level has eased a tad bit. When you come to the Asian markets this morning, yes, um, you know there is, a, there is a fair amount of green that you can see. But in the economic data, which is out, Japan's manufacturing confidence has hit a two-year low on trade worries. But that said, the manufacturing data, the September PMI, has actually nudged higher to 52.9 versus 52.5. Also, for our own market, uh, the rupee might see a bit of strength, for one, on the back of dollar weakness. But secondly, sources suggest to CNBC TV18 that India could be paying for Iranian oil using rupees instead of dollars. Um, the flows picture continues to be the same, so the FIs continue to be sellers, sold about 2,184 crore in the cash market, while the DIs bought about 1,200 crore in the cash market on Wednesday. All right, uh, Reema, what about stocks we should be focusing on today? Well, no prizes for guessing. It's Yes Bank, Absolutely. which is uh, you know on top of my list. So that is a stock which could see a fair amount of pain today after RBI has cut uh, CEO Rana Kapoor's tenor to only five months. So it will end in January of 2019. City downgrades the stock to a sell, kept the target price to 270. IDFC, which has downgraded the stock, has kept the target price all the way down to 230, which is about a 28% downside from current levels. Um, Jet Airways, not just the stock impact, but in a bizarre incident, you had um, you know close to about 35 passengers in the Jaipur flight, uh, you know suffering nosebleed on account of a crew error. Um, so the, clearly, you know the sentiment is going to be weak on Jet Airways. Um, also, not just that, sources suggest that the IT department has conducted a survey at their Jet Airways offices. HCL Technology has won a three-year deal from Asta, which is UK's third largest grocery retailer. The size of the deal is not known, but it's a digital transformation deal, um, so the stock could be um, in the green. <coughs> For Graphi, the Karnataka State Pollution Control Board has inspected the company's Bengaluru facility. Uh, in fact, the Karnataka Pollution Control Board in 2012 had issued a closure notice on their Bangalore facilities on account of pollution issues. Uh, but the company had managed to get a stay order on that. But once again, there has been a revisit of the Bangalore facility by the Pollution Control Board. So clearly, that stock too could see a negative impact. All the ILNFS group stocks will be in focus. Reports suggest that the group company plans to sell ILNFS financial services and assets worth four and a half thousand crore rupees to pay down debt uh, steel Nigel you'll uh, elaborate a little more but the steel ministry has proposed some customs duty on flat steel imports etc and Tata Motors which has downgraded their outlook to a negative but of course it could be a bit behind the curve because even the other uh, rating agencies have already downward revised their ratings but Okay, Rima, thank you so much for getting us that list. We will talk more about Yes Bank and Graphite stocks later on the show. But right now, it's time for a quick break. Up next, we'll get you an exclusive conversation with Jamie Diamond of JP Morgan on India and trade war concerns. We'll launch our CNBC TV in exclusive then. The Indian economy can double in 10 years. That's the vote of confidence coming in from the chairman and CEO of JP Morgan, Mr. Jamie Diamond. Speaking to Shireen Ban, Diamond said 
that he is very optimistic about India's long-term growth story and also added that he is not concerned about the emerging market growth story. Speaking about trade tensions, Diamond said, and he called it trade skirmish and not a war. However, he expects a resolution only after the United States midterm elections that are scheduled in November. You're going at 8%. The government has made, made tremendous progress. I give full credit to your prime minister with the GST, infrastructure, uh, you know, uh, benefits transfers, uh, the, all the things that are making the economy grow, grow better. And of course, you have a, a very vibrant entrepreneurial sector, corporate mm. sector, et cetera. So we're quite optimistic of the long-term growth of India. But what would concern you with respect to the emerging market story today? Yeah, I'm, I'm not really concerned. You know, you have, first of all, put, a, put Turkey and Argentina aside, where I think you have very serious issues. The rest of the emerging markets are actually doing quite well. So how would India stack up in, in this uh, so-called emerging market or developing economy basket today? Well, it is the fastest growing economy on the planet. Mm. And the government's taking all the things that will make it grow better. It's got an education system and the national highway system. You're reducing corruption. Uh, you're fixing some of the banking problem, the problems in the uh, non-performing sector. You change the bankruptcy laws. These are hard things to do. You know, you travel around the world, you see governments who are unable to do that. Mm. And, you know, they, it really does hamper their uh, economies. And this government's been very forceful in getting those things done. Mm. Like I said, you have a government doing the right things. You know, I met with some entrepreneurs yesterday. They're doing some fabulous stuff here. One of the concerns when we speak of fund flow specifically <coughs> is what happens in a post-QE world. Uh, and that, I think, is weighing on market sentiment specifically. How do you read that? Yeah, well, look, that's a valid concern. I mean, we had this global QE. It's, it's being reversed in the United States. It'll eventually be reversed elsewhere. But you also have the why and the what. You know, if we're growing strong and they're mm. raising rates and reversing QE, that's actually, I think, going to be fine. Yeah. You know, if, if it has to be reversed in a much faster way, if America has uh, inflation, then you can see central banks doing things that we won't like mm. and the people get a little bit concerned about. But in and of itself, the world's growing and reversing QE is the right thing to do. Normalizing interest rates is the right thing to do. You've been concerned about the trade war that's mm -hmm. currently underway between the U.S. and China. We've seen another bunch of retaliatory tariffs mm -hmm. being imposed. The markets so far have shrugged this off. What do you make of that? Yeah, because it's not a trade war. I, mm. I call it a trade skirmish. Is there it are, still a skirmish? Yes. There, the, the, the American government, our president, is right to raise the issues about, particularly about China. We would like to see a NAFTA deal done. Right now, it's just trade tit for tat, and hopefully we'll get to resolution. I don't expect a trade war, I don't, but I also don't expect any progress before elections. You know, 10 years of Lehman, and uh, you have categorically stated that you don't believe that next financial crisis is going to be linked to the banking system because mm -hmm. enough checks and balances are in place. Uh, JP Morgan says that by 2020, we could expect another financial crisis. Where do you see the vulnerabilities today? Yeah, I would, I would say not say financial crisis. The finan you're going to have another recession one day, mm. there, and that will cause problems in financial markets, that's, that's a given. The banking system is very sound. In fact, I, I, think, I always tell the regulators, they'd be taking a victory lap. Lehman wouldn't happen today. So where, where do you believe that we find ourselves most vulnerable today? If you, if you believe that the banking system is much I, more secure in comparison I, I, I to 2008? I think the most biggest vulnerability is cyber. Mm. Uh, just, for, just for everybody. I think that we have to focus on it. I think regulators have to focus on it. I think the United States government has to focus on it. I think we have to make sure because cyber terrorists and cyber you know, countries and that they can cause real damage. What do you see in terms of momentum? Do you believe that the bull run that we've yeah. been in the midst of has more legs, has more steam? I mean, you know, well, people you have been writing premature obituaries of, of, of the bull run for a while now. So I don't really see the potholes. There, I guess that there'll be a recession one day, but I don't see the immediate potholes. So if you postulate there's going to be fairly decent growth for a couple of years, that means earnings are going to be going up. That means even if interest rates go up and the earnings risk premium comes down, mm. these stocks can grow into their current valuations. So speaking of India and your investments here in India, in terms of hiring, yeah. in terms of uh, the kind of growth potential that you see, given the fact that uh, uh, you know, this is one of the fastest yeah. growing and currently the fastest growing economy in the world, yeah. what is it going to mean in so terms think of, of JP Morgan's plans? Think of us as more bankers covering more clients. Mm. So we cover a lot of multinationals coming in. We cover a lot of companies here. We do research in 120 companies. And all of that's going to double over the next five to ten years. And it takes a lot of work. You're not going to hire people, systems, risk, legal, credit, compliance, loan books, and stuff like that. But that, that is the plan. So that's one, is how we handle, you know, how we do business here. The second is we have what we call a global service center, but it's fabulous. It's 35,000 people in a lot of cities that do tons of work mm. in security and technology and programming and research. And, and, uh, uh, and we're growing that, too. And they really are excellent. You know, so we, we're very optimistic about the future of India. 
Okay, so optimistic uh, for the Indian economy and does not see trade war escalating. But it is time now for a quick break on the show. Up next, Yes Bank will definitely be in focus today as RBI tells that Rana Kapoor's term as MD and CEO will end on the 31st of January next year. Details when we return. <laughs>